Do you know the real story of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz? In this video, Elizabeth Lutz discusses her book, Finding Dorothy, and gives us a glimpse behind the curtain of the Wizard of Oz. Hi, it's Angie with HEC Books, where we discuss books with the authors who write them. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe for more content. Now let's meet Elizabeth Letts and hear from her about her book, Finding Dorothy. Elizabeth Letts, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. You know, Wizard of Oz, it's just this thing that knows no time limit. It's so true. It seems like it's existed forever. It's really almost hard to believe that originally it was actually invented by someone. So what is the staying power of it? Well, I think, you know, the Smithsonian called The Wizard of Oz America's first homegrown fairy tale. And it really, when you think about it, it is, it's our story. It's the American story. And I, I think there's something so kind of quintessentially American about it. So you have the scarecrow and the scarecrow represents, you know, our love of our agrarian past and farming. But then you have the tin man and the tin man is, you know, made out of machines and we'd love everything mechanical and futuristic. Mm -hmm. And you have the yellow brick road that people followed. That's our history. That's our present. Americans are people who like to go. But then we also love our homes. I think I've heard you liken this book to when it came out, its popularity. I mean, millions yes. and millions of copies, it sequels, uh -huh. millions and millions. I've heard you liken it to kind of like the Harry Potter series of its yes. time, right? Yes. That was what I realized when I started looking into it. So um, The Wizard of Oz, we know it from the movie. Right. But originally it was a book, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, which was published in 1900, the author L. Frank Baum. And it was an immediate overnight success. It was a giant phenomenon. Uh, they didn't have movies then, but there was a play. It opened in a musical play. It opened in Chicago. And it, then it toured the country. It went to Broadway and it went all over. And so if you were growing up in the early 20th century, mm -hmm. you would have known the book. And then they started putting out a book a year. Um, every year around Christmas, the book would come out. So at the time, 1939, when they were making the movie *The Wizard of Oz*, they were um, the people that were, you know, adults at that time. They knew those characters and they knew that book. It was something really, really familiar to them. Yeah, they felt. I'm sure they felt an ownership of those characters yes. too, as you write in your yeah. book. Yeah, just like I think that's what you see with the Harry Potter phenomenon right. now. So um, yes, it was very much like that, and that surprised me. I thought that. You know, I thought it was the film that had had created it, but no, actually, that that mythology was already going before that. Frank Baum used to get uh, fan mail from children by the wheelbarrow full. Wow. Well, so that's interesting because we know a lot about J.K. Rowling and how yes. that all started. Frank Baum, not that much. Not that much, right? And and that was really for me. That was kind of the starting place. I didn't know anything about him. And I was reading the book aloud to my son about six or seven years ago as a bedtime story. I had read it as a child. And honestly, the book didn't make such a big impression on me when, when I was reading it. It was, um, it. it was the movie that I remembered. But I was reading it to my son. All of a sudden, I thought, well, it's got this whole different layer that I never, you know how that happens mm -hmm. when you when are you get... reading something or, or see a movie and it's supposed to be for children, but then right. there's this whole other level. That's what happened. And that's when I realized that I didn't know anything about the author. And so I'm an author. And I thought, why don't, did he ever write another book? Who is this fellow L. Frank Baum? What's the L stand for? You yeah. know? And so I looked him up. And that was how I got interested in the first place. And then I saw that you were interested, but you knew that it was a real book that you could write when you saw a picture. Is that right? That's right. So one of the things I learned when I looked him up was that he dedicated the book to his wife. Uh, his wife's name was Maud. And the dedication, which I really loved, was to my good friend and comrade, my wife. And so I discovered that Maud herself was this very strong woman, very well-educated, one of the first women to attend the Ivy League. And her mother was a famous suffragist and advocate for the rights of women. So when I discovered that, I was interested in it, but it didn't say to me, Elizabeth, write a book about this. It just seemed like an interesting background. At some point later, though, I, that was when I found this picture. And the picture was a picture of Maud Baum. At the time, she was Frank's widow. So she was uh, 77, 78 years old on the set at MGM with Judy Garland. And I thought, wait a minute, there's, there's a link between the story and the movie. And the link is his wife, and his, the book was dedicated to her. And that's when I became intrigued and thought, I need to find out what the story is behind the story. This book 
it's based around Maud, not Frank, mm -hmm. Maud. Is that how you decided kind of that? Yes. Is that the evolution of that? Yes, yes. Um, and Frank is a fascinating character. And, For sure. And, and yeah. Frank, you know, there's been, there have been lots of biographies written of Frank, which I used in my research. Not as much as known about Maud, although there was quite a bit of, of research about her too, but no one's ever written a book about her. But I thought to myself, okay, you know, she was there. So Frank died in 1919. Frank um, wrote the book, died, and now it's 20 years later. And I, I just assumed that there was no connection between the story and the movie. But so think about Maude. She's 77, she's 78. She's the last person alive who really knows the story's secrets. And the more that you look into the, the story, the more you discover that it was not a story that Frank made up out of nowhere. It was really in a very profound way, the story of their life together. So it wasn't just his story, but it was her story as well. No wonder she was invested in trying to protect it. The movie, The Wizard of Oz, the book, The Wizard of Oz, is really kind of a girl power kind of story, isn't it? I was interested in this idea that the Baum family, and when I say the Baum family, you have Maud and you have Frank, and you have the mother-in-law, they were all very close. Matilda Jocelyn Gage was this towering figure, a real intellectual, a close friend of Susan B. Anthony's. So much so that Susan B. Anthony would stay at their house so often that she actually carved her name in one of the upstairs windows. <laughs> and their house is now a museum. Wow. Um, and so Maude grew up with that. And you know, when I looked into the story, you might kind of think, oh, tension, the mother-in-law, she's this. Right. No, they were very, very close. And it was clear that the ideas that were circulating through Maud's family, that Frank be, uh, really came to embrace them as well. And when you start to look at the story, you think, okay, you know, who has the power in Oz? One of the things I love about the book too is sprinkled throughout the book are pieces that, little hints to the Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. And, and, and a lot of them are based off of real things that happened yes, that, yes. that influenced Frank, right? Mm -hmm. In this writing, like, for example, The Tin Man, yes. The Story of the Tin Man, The Story of the Scarecrow, uh -huh. The Story of the Witches. Yes, all of that comes from fact, yes. Love it. It's, and we don't want to give it away because it's part of the fun, unless there's any kind of little hints you want to give to any of Well, those. one of the things that's, out, so I can tell you a little bit about the witches because I don't think this gives away too much, but um, Matilda Jocelyn Gage, as I said, she was a very uh, progressive woman and she became interested in the history of witchcraft. Mm. And she wrote a book in which she, she did uh, quite a bit of research. She thought that a lot of times it was smart women who were being accused of witchcraft and that witchcraft was basically being um, used to kind of keep women down and keep them in their place. And so there was a very direct tie between Matilda and her beliefs and and the presence of the witches in Oz. Were there some days that were so draining mm -hmm. for you? What, were, what parts were, were so hard for you to write? There's a part where Maude gets sick. Um, yeah. She, you know, so this is the 19th century and healthcare was not what it was and childbirth was very dangerous for women. And I, um, I have a background, so I, I'm a nurse. I was a nurse midwife and I worked in that field for about 20 years while I was getting started writing books. And so as I was reading Maud's history, I found out that she had suffered from a complication that would be possibly fatal in 2019, much less you know, back when she had it. And I was shocked, you know, and I started reading about her illness and I started researching and I kept thinking, how on earth did she, did she survive? And it took her about two years to recover. So that part was really emotional for me thinking about, um, you know, thank goodness now childbirth is so much safer and um, something like that would be very unlikely to happen. But then I kept thinking about how much grit did this woman have to, to live through? It was very, very, so that part was painful. Another part that I found really emotionally, I guess, intense, all of the scenes with Judy Garland. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Because it, it just, it breaks your heart. Because you don't, when you watch The Wizard of Oz, yeah, you don't think about that at all. No. All the things that were, that yeah. happened. And that's well documented. All Very well things. documented, yes. And she was a 15-year-old girl when they started filming. And think about Hollywood in those days. Um, it's interesting because the reason that Louis B. Mayer wanted to make the film was that 
Disney had had a really big success with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, which is an animated film. They didn't know if you could really do a, a, an, a, a fantasy on film. Mm. They weren't sure, but, but they were going to try and because special effects were coming along and they were gonna kind of invent this as they went along. But the real difficulty with Oz was that it, the entire story hangs on, a, on a, a girl child and a bunch of people in animal and other kinds of right. costumes, right? right. So, so um, and actually there was only one really famous child star at the time and it was Shirley Temple. And so they did think maybe Shirley Temple, if you could, can you imagine? I no, mean, no, 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 right? no. It's Judy, Dorothy is Judy Garland. And obviously. I love Shirley Temple, but, but no. no. <laughs> and, um, but so they decided to take a, take a chance on, on Judy, but it was a big budget film. They put a lot of money into it. MGM was a pressure cooker in those days. They controlled every aspect of her life yeah. and it was the great depression. Mm. So you get a job at a studio that has a steady paycheck you, um, you know, you, th nobody's going to tell you you're, when you're mistreated, they're going to tell you to, you know, basically suck it up. That's what she did. So, um, so that was hard. And also Judy Garland, because there's something about Judy that made people love her. Right. And we all feel like we know her. Was there anything that you found fascinating, but you couldn't find a way to put into the book? Oh, so many so things. <laughs> I could have had three books. But I was really, really interested actually in um, Matilda Jocelyn Gage. And um, so one of the things that I thought was really fascinating, and I end up kind of just mentioning it in passing, was that she actually, for, for 1876, which was the country's centennial, she wrote with Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, a declaration of the rights of women. And they went down to Philadelphia where they were reading the entire uh, Declaration of Independence in Independence Square, the vice president of the United States. And the whole Independence Square was filled with thousands and thousands of people. And they, the women, lied their way in with faked press credentials or something and were sitting up toward the front and secretly with them in their bags, they had these hundreds of these declarations of the rights of women that they had printed out. And so at, what they did is as the, the vice president was giving a speech, they stormed the stage, handed it to him. He didn't know what to do. He was so surprised he took it and then walked out tossing these documents into the crowd. In 1876. In 1876. I mean, like today, okay, but in 1876, can you imagine? No. So I absolutely just, I love that. And I wrote, a, I wrote a whole chapter about it. It didn't end up going into the book, but the image of, of, of that happening. And one of the things that was really, I thought was really great was that when they wrote it, they dedicated it to, they, to the daughters of 1976. So they were saying a hundred years from now, if we do this now, um, we will, will, it'll be good for, for us. And, you know, sometimes I feel discouraged. I think, you know, Judy Garland um, with harassment in the studio in, in 1939, and we're talking about Me Too 80 years later, and that's discouraging. But then I think about, about these women, I think, okay, that's all right, because they fought and they fought, and it, maybe they didn't get it, but their daughters did. And maybe their daughters didn't get what my daughters are gonna get. Certainly my daughters are, are way out ahead of mine, and yours will be even more. So I think that gave me hope. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it. Stay tuned for the second part of this interview where Let's will discuss the research it took to write her book.